Hi there, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 391. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph, and today is a lovely sunny Sunday afternoon here in southwestern Pennsylvania where I'm coming to you from, the Laurel Mountains region to be specific, and my backyard to be even more specific. Um, I am on my swing, which we just recently moved from the front yard where it used to be down here under this huge oak tree that we have in the backyard. And I don't know why we never thought to put the swing here before because it's a lovely spot. I can see my garden, I can see the yard, the trees, the birds. There was just a pileated woodpecker on the tree trunk right above me, which is probably best that he flew away anyhow because he's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, it was just too lovely a day to be inside, so I thought I would try outside. So we'll see how this goes. I'm also being attacked by bugs because I'm under the tree in the shade and they love me. But I'll try to not do this the whole time. <laughs> um, and I apologize ahead of time for ambient noise, specifically my neighbor who is mowing the grass. He's been mowing for hours. He doesn't have that big of a yard. I don't know what he's doing, but anyway. I decided to stop waiting for him to be done. Um, as it is, Bill has to do some grinding and welding in a little bit, so I just told him to like get my attention and I'll pause and he can do that and then I'll rejoin recording the podcast. So heads up, I guess, that there will probably be interruptions, <laughs> but that's okay. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Um, let me just remind you that you will find show notes for the episode in the description box below the video here on YouTube. I also post them to the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Ravelry group and I post them to the blog on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works website. So you can find everything there, try to give you all the information about things that I'm talking about. Um, I'll also remind you, since it's new, that I do have a YouTube membership available here for this channel. So if you're interested in supporting this channel, um, making it possible for me to add extra content every month. Um, I would be delighted if you would join. That is a small but growing community, so that's exciting. Um, you can just click the join button that you should find next to the subscribe button here on um, on Ravelry, on, on Ravelry, on YouTube here underneath the video. Some people have told me they've looked for it and can't find it there. I've learned since that there are some devices where it won't show up there and instead you need to go to the Fiber Nymph Dye Works channel, like the main page of the channel on YouTube, um, and then you will find it there. Um, there'll be like a subscribe button and a join button and if you click join it just it gives you the information about joining what you get basically I'm posting a little bit of extra content for my members um, in the form of posts and member videos I did a video last week that was a short garden tour that was fun I hope everybody enjoyed that um, but yeah it's just another way if you would like to help support the channel and the content I would greatly appreciate it so um, anyway, let's get into things. I am not wearing one stitch of knitwear because it's just a little too warm for that today, but I do have a bunch of fun things to show you. Um, there is also in the shop right now, there is a semi-solids event happening. Um, it's not an official update, but I did dye and um, list whole bunch of semi-solids on a whole bunch of different bases. There's not a lot of any one color on any one base, but there are I think seven different bases represented and yarn bases and um, a lot of different colors on each one. So they're great for mixing and matching. Um, and I am offering a coupon code, which is SSE15, that is good through Tuesday, like the end of the day Tuesday, and that'll take 15% off any purchase of four or more skeins from the semi-solids event. Um, so if you are looking for some semi-solids, that's a great place to start. I love working with semi-solids. They are my favorite thing aside from self-striping. I just, I could knit with just self-striping and semi-solids probably forever and be perfectly happy. But anyway, <laughs> um, I just wanted to let you know about that in case you don't make it all the way to the shop news segment. Um, and also, I just also wanted to mention, how many times can I say the word also? I also wanted to mention the fact that I'm going to be on vacation later this week um, and away from the studio obviously we're 
Um, we've got some family stuff going on, and so I will be gone from the studio from the 9th, which is Thursday, through the following Saturday, which is the 18th. Um, so I will not be recording in that. Th well, you know what? That's not true because part of that time I'm going to be at my mom's. So I very well may record some sort of special episode while I'm in Florida by the pool. That could be fun. Or maybe at the ocean. Oh, we'll have to see what works out. <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to give you that heads up. And I will also talk about that a little bit more during shop news because obviously that will affect shipping times for orders that are placed during that time. All right, so I think that's all of the preliminary announcements, so let's go ahead and get into the knitting. I'm going to take a drink of water first because this is literally probably about the 10th time I've tried starting this video and there have been distractions and disruptions galore, including a certain cat that is laying right behind my tripod. I think she's finally settled down. She was trying to like rub up against the tripod before and it just kept like knocking it over. So I got a new water bottle. That's exciting. <laughs> it's a Camelback Eddy with this really interesting bite spout thing. My daughter has one of these and it keeps everything really cold because it's insulated. And I had a Nalgene bottle that was eons old and it finally broke like beyond redemption this past week. So I ordered this and I really like it. It's still a weird sensation doing the whole bite and suck thing, but anyway, Camelback, not sponsored. All right, so let's get into some knitting. I have some very, very, very exciting finished objects. And if it was like even 10 degrees cooler, I would be tempted to have this on, but it's not, it's way too hot. But my simple stripes pullover is finished. Oh my gosh, I am so happy with how this turned out, guys. So happy. So let me give you the details first. It's the Simple Stripes Pullover by Suvi Samola. Um, and I knit it using my Fiber Nymph Dye Works ridge top fingering weight, which is my non-superwash base that I'm almost out of. I think I talked about that before. We won't talk about that because it makes me sad. But anyway, um, I had a whole bunch of leftovers, large quantity leftovers, and that's what I used. Six different colors. Um, actually, technically eight different colors because I swapped out this green for this one stripe and then this wisp color for this darker gray for one stripe. But otherwise, you know, I used the same progression. So this was ember. This is, um, oh, I think I swapped out this brown too somewhere for a different brown. Yeah, this brown is a little bit of a different brown. Um, so ember, peat, warm honey, lime, graphite, and peacock. Um, were the main colors and I think the ones that I swapped out aside from wisp um, and I don't know what green I don't know that this was a regular green it might have just been you know like a one-off color that I did same with this brown anyway those are the colors I used this sweater took just over was this I had two large quantity large um, yeah that wasn't this I don't remember how much yarn this took I'll put it it, well, it'll be in the in the project page that'll be linked below in the show notes. Um, but yeah, it it's just it's fabulous. I finished it, and I do have a couple of pictures. I'll try to put one or two in here. It was super hot the day that I finished blocking it, but I wanted pictures. You know how that is. So I had Emma take some pictures of me up on the deck, and she just went crazy doing. She, when I ask her to do that a lot of times, she just keeps taking pictures the entire time she's holding my camera, even when I'm like not posed, I'm just moving around. And so I end up with a bunch of crazy pictures. I did put several of them up on my personal page on Instagram just for a laugh because they were so silly. But anyway, I will put a couple of the nicer ones here. Um, anyway, it fits super well. It, um, you know what, I, can I try it on? Let me see if I can put it on real quick because I want to show you how well the neckline fits. It's actually not too hot under this tree. I could leave it on. Oh my gosh, that bug went right in my eye. Okay, so here we go. That's, that's an attractive look, I know. So here it is. Okay, 
Hang on. Okay, here I am behind the swing. So that's how long it is. Sleeves, the neckline. Oh my gosh, sorry, I <laughs> just sat down really hard on the swing. Anyway, um, well, I have a t-shirt on underneath it, obviously, but the neckline sits really nicely. It's not too wide, like it doesn't come out as far as my bra straps, um, and it's not super tight against my neck. It's, it's so comfortable. I love everything about it. Let me review some of the modifications I made to the pattern. Um, I don't remember which size I was knitting. That's on the project pages. Um, which I do post project pages both to Ravelry and to my secondary website, which is called My Favorite Day. And I link to both of those in the show notes that are below the video here. So you can check them out um, at either place if you'd like to get all of the details of the projects that I'm talking about. Oh, beautiful butterfly fluttering by. <laughs> anyway, um, I followed the pattern on down through the arms. Actually, I followed the pattern for the body the whole way through. I did not do any waist shaping, but I don't think there was any written in the pattern. Um, and then I made it much longer, I'm pretty sure, than the pattern called for because I wanted it to be not quite a tunic, but I didn't want it to be too short either. I like things to come right down about the bottom of my jeans fly, That, like the, the bottom of it. Um, that's my preferred length for this kind of a sweater. So that's what I did and then instead of doing folded um, cuffs and hem, I did ribbing on the sleeves um, and then I did a split hem and ribbing for the bottom of the sweater, which I'm very happy with. Um, it is comfortable. It's just, I love everything about it. It's one of my most successful sweaters and it's my very first fingering weight sweater that I've ever knit. So I'm super happy about that. I used US three and four needles for everything. I will say when I was doing the ribbing at the bottom, um, I had a false start with that because I thought, oh, well, I could maybe not go down a needle size because I couldn't remember how I had done it on my weekender because I did the same kind of hem on my weekender. Um, but then I realized it was gonna not look right. So I did rip it back out and I started over with the threes instead of the four um, and it worked great. And I also did a one by one rib on the hem as well as on the cuff. Um, I was gonna do like a four by two rib because sometimes I like that wider kind of ribbing at the bottom of a sweater like this, but that didn't look right either. So the one by one worked out just fine. Anyway, I don't know what else to tell you about this sweater. I think that's everything. Um, Oh, the sleeves. The only the, I did modify how the sleeves were supposed to be decreased. I don't remember how many decreases she called for in the pattern, but I ended up decreasing the whole way down the sleeve until I started the cuff because they were very roomy sleeves on me. Now, looking at the pattern picture, they did not look roomy on that model. Um, and I don't know why. I mean, I did get gauge on this sweater. Yay! Ha! Ah. Um, but my sleeves were just sort of roomy and I didn't want them to be that roomy. So I did, I think, a series of five decreases every eight rounds. And then I did them every five rounds the rest of the way down. And they're still, I mean, like, this is not, this is fine. But, like, if I wouldn't have done that much decreasing, this would have been much roomier here down at the bottom of the cuff. So... Anyway, I'm very happy with how this sweater turned out, and you know what, honestly, it feels pretty good. It's not, like the sun isn't directly hitting on me, so I think I'm gonna just leave it on for right now. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so yeah, that's it. That is my ridge top, simple stripes pullover. It's finished. I'm thrilled. Pattern by Suvi Samola. I really like the pattern. It was very well written, so I can highly recommend that pattern. Um, yeah, so yay. All right, my other, oh no, did I not bring them down here? I, there, I have one FO that I forgot to bring down with me. So when Bill tells me that he's going to need to grind, run the grinder, I'll run up to the house and get it then and I'll pop it in. And if by chance he doesn't do that while I'm recording, I'll just, I'll remember whenever I'm recording or editing and then I'll pop it in there. Um, 
so we'll, we're gonna move on um, I did finish my weaving <sighs> again I'm so happy with how this turned out so this is a piece of weaving now when I say finished it's done I did soak it I have not dealt with all of my little ends from that are you know like where I changed color I, I need to take care of those and I have not finished figured out what I'm doing with my fringe my ends yet um, but I don't know what I want to do so I'm, I'm calling it done and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with those ends later <laughs> but anyway this is the weaving that I did on my 24 inch rigid heddle loom my Ashford rigid heddle and this is the yarn that I purchased at Maryland Sheep and Wool just last month um, some Bartlett yarns. This is their sport weight and I had two skeins of this beautiful blue. It's a heathered blue that I used for the warp and then I had a whole bunch of mini skeins. They're called sport swirls I think. Um, mini skein sets that I used for the weft and I, I didn't use all of the ones that I had but I used a good many of them and I didn't use the entire mini skeins but this project took almost 1100 yards so that was a lot of yarn <laughs> I do have enough left over that I could probably make like a scarf or like one of my fringy cows um, although I keep eyeing it up and thinking I would really like to knit a sweater vest or something out of it because I would love the experience of knitting with it and I was doing a little bit of swatching the other night with it I was just sitting there and didn't have anything else I really wanted to work on so I was just knitting up a swatch and it knits up beautifully this is a very wooly wool though like you can tell by the fringe it just wants to stick to itself um, so but I mean Ridge Shop is also a wooly wool not quite as wooly as this but um, well, no, you know what? I can't actually say that because I've woven with this before too and it will stick. Like it, the fringe will, you know, the yarns will stick to each other. Um, anyway, I, my hem stitch was beautiful. I haven't woven lately, so I hadn't hem stitched in a while and it came right back to me. So I was very excited. I did such a good job. I'm really pretty happy with how this whole thing turned out. Um, I did not make any major mistakes. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna end up eating a fly on this podcast because they just keep flying directly into my face. All right, so here was here was my plan for this. My plan was to alternate solid blocks of color and then do stripes leading into the next color and then do a solid block and then stripe into the next color and so on and that is what I ended up doing I did not do it with any planned number of um, weft rows are they called picks I think that's the weaving term picks um, I did not do that with any particular number of each for this for the solid blocks or the striped blocks and you can actually see that because my first one um, I did pretty large um, and even the first stripe section was pretty large and then the rest of them were closer to this size but like I'm not I'm not um, I was gonna say I'm not an organized person it's not even organized I like just doing things randomly like this kind of stuff I don't need it to be like it doesn't make me crazy that these aren't all the same number of stripes in each section I don't I don't care or the same size solid sections I just really like it how it is so anyway, I did that, and when I talked about this last time, I told you that I wasn't sure I was gonna love how it looked afterwards. Well, I was wrong, because I do. I love it, I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, the only mistake I made out of this whole thing, and I am so excited to say that I only did this one time, and I have to find it so I can show you. Let's see, I mean, I don't have to, but I'm gonna, because, you know, Hmm, where are you? I have one spot, oh here it is. It's in my second solid section, right here. See those, I missed two warp threads and they're in the same row that I made that mistake. So I am gonna fix that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do kind of like a little duplicate stitch thing to fix that and I think that'll be fine. 
um, and I don't think you'll actually really be able to tell that I did that. But that's the only place in this whole thing. It's 74 inches long. Um, only place that I did that. And considering how sticky these war this warp yarn was, or this yarn was in general, that's all that's astounding because I have used superwash yarns before and ended up with more missed warp threads than that. And I think I accidentally figured out something that will help that issue. So when I decided to do this, I got my loom out and was going to warp it. And my plan had been to use my 10 dent heddle for this yarn. However, I then remembered, oh yeah, I don't have a 10 dent heddle for my 24 inch loom. I have one for my smaller loom, my 10 inch loom. Um, and the dents are 10, 10 dents means 10 threads per inch is what you get between the slots and the holes. The, um, yeah, the holes. Um, it gives you 10 ends or 10 strands per inch. So this being a sport weight yarn, see for fingering weight yarn, I often use a 12.5 and for worsted weight, I have used a 10. So for sport weight, I thought, well, the 10 should probably still be okay because this was, you know, again, it's sticky yarn and it's sort of fluffy. Um, so I didn't want to, I did, I, a 12 would have definitely been too tight, but I didn't have that. So I used the 7.5 and I'll tell you what, the fact that it was, the threads were further apart from each other. I think that made a world of difference um, in how much those warp threads stuck. And honestly, I think the fact that they stuck at all or would stick next to each other was more an issue of my warping tension in, um, than anything. And actually, I didn't do such a bad job in warping this. I, it was pretty tight. I didn't really have a lot of problems. Um, anyway, so I think what I learned from that without meaning to is that maybe I need to try warping using... Um, fewer threads per inch in my warps than I seem to want to use most of the time. I'm sorry, this fly is really driving me crazy. So anyway, I'm going to have to keep that in mind for future projects. So anyhow, but very happy with how this turned out. It still smells cheapy though. I love the smell of this yarn. The whole time it was sitting in my dining room while I was working on it, it just smelled so good. Um, Anyway, but again, I don't know what I'm doing with my fringe. Um, I thought about getting a fringe twister and doing a twisted fringe. I've never actually done that before, but I'm not sure that I want to do that because I'm not sure if I do that, if they'll still want to stick to each other. Um, I may just trim them and have them shorter, or I may look at other treatments for fringe. If you're a weaver and you have any ideas of what might be a good way to deal with my fringe on this piece, I'm happy to hear suggestions. Okay, so that is a finished object. And then the last finished object that I have down here with me to show me show you, it's my Strya hat. I finished it. I did not finish it during the weekend knit along challenge though. So this is an Andrea Mallory pattern called the Strya hat. It's very similar to her Strya pullover or pullover? No, cardigan, Strya cardigan. Um, pattern. But anyway, she did this last weekend as a knit along challenge and you had from Thursday to Monday, you were supposed to be able to make it in that amount of time. I cast it on on Friday and it was slow going for me, I got to admit. Um, and I did not finish it. I had other stuff going on last weekend too. So I just, I've been working on it all week. I enjoyed the project, um, but it, it did take me a while. So Straya is done with half fisherman's rib and the yarn I used, oh yeah, I remember talking to you about this last week because or last time I was like, oh, I'll just probably use stash leftovers. No, I totally dyed up yarn for this. Um, this is my Linnaeus base and I dyed, um, this is in Wisp, which Linnaeus is a merino yak nylon base. So that yak gives it that, you know, darkish oatmeal-y color to begin with. So Wisp, even though it's a very light gray, turns out to be pretty dark on this, on this yarn. 
Um, anyway, so I did a skein of Wisp for the main color and then I did four minis. Um, this, um, these are all colors, well, aside from this one, this is Warm Honey, which I've dyed a ton and I just love it. It continues to be one of my favorite colors, as you can see. Um, but the other three are new and they're new semi-solids that I'm starting to do. In fact, there are a bunch of skeins in the shop for the semi-solid event in these colors. So this is Finch Brown, Spruce, and Habanero, which is an orangey red, um, along with Warm Honey. So this hat used, did I write the grams down on here? I don't know. No, of course I didn't. I used no more than three grams of each of these colors. Now granted, I only dyed up minis, so it's not like I had full skeins left over, but like this is a perfect hat to do with just scraps or leftovers, honestly. Um, I mean, unless you want specific colors and specific yarns, then sure, use a mini and you know, whatever. Uh, you're not just not going to use very much of it is my point. Um, and then I used, I forget how much of this, I think all together the hat was in the 40-ish gram range, 46 maybe. Um, so it did not use a lot of yarn and I obviously have tons of yarn left over. I'm thinking about maybe doing a cowl with the same Kind of thing in the fisherman's rib because since I learned how to do the fisherman's rib to do this hat um, I'd kind of like to do it some more just because it, it took me a while to get into a rhythm with it that's for sure um, the whole thing was done on US 2 needles because the regular ribbing that you do at the bottom and the fisherman's rib the fisherman's rib is so much squishier and bigger um, you can use the same needle for both um, it does call for a tubular cast on which I have never successfully done a tubular cast on and I usually ignore it and just do a regular cast on um, But I actually did it. I, I made myself do it. I ended up losing six stitches So the sat ended up being smaller than I was planning for it to be It does not fit me which is why I'm not trying it on but it does fit Emma so she has a new hat and the only other thing I'll say about it is you can see my seam. It ended up being very wonky um, because where you join every other round is you start with a purl and I always have a hard time going from needle to needle on a purl. I don't know why. But anyway, so I did try to mediate that whenever I was weaving in my ends. Um, now I will say the half fisherman's rib decreases that I did watch her videos, her tutorials for. Those didn't give me any problems at all. I was able to do them without any, well, without any trouble. So I feel like I learned a lot with this hat. It was a nice project for learning new techniques. And I'm happy with how it turned out, even though it's not perfect. It's a little wonky and wibbly wobbly here at the, the end. But anyway, um, I'm going to pause because I think Bill is ready to do his noisy work. And my neighbor is now right across from the fence. So I'm going to go and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. I think he's done using the grinder. I can't really tell, but if we hear it again, I'll have to pause. Anyway, give me a chance to run up to the house. Also enough time has passed that I had to like resituate, so we're slightly different angle, so the sun isn't right on my face. Anyway, I think I had finished talking about the hat, right? Where is it? I don't even know where it's at. I'm probably sitting on it. Um, I think we're done talking about the hat. But I did go up and I got the other FO that I had forgotten to bring down with me. And that is um, the sample set of shorty socks that I did ooh, for the um, striped accents shorty sock sets. <laughs> I think when I talked about this last time, I had a much wordier title that I was going to use for that item in the shop. But I landed on striped accent shorty sock sets. It has a little bit better flow. So anyway, here they are. The whole point is the sets come with a 50 gram skein of a semi-solid and then a 25 gram mini of a self-striping. And I wanted to illustrate different ways that you could put those together for shorty socks. So the first one I did, I did the heel flap and heel turn and the toe in the self-striping and the rest of the sock was in the semi-solid. In this case this is um, Bright Caribbean 
and the self striping is never not color and these are all on my bounce base both of those and then the second sock I did the cuff on in the self striping and then I did this band like right after I finished my gusset decreases I did this band that showed the whole stripe sequence actually um, and that ended shortly before I started my toe so that's just two different ways that you can use them and to do these two shorties, which I actually made a little tiny bit shorter than what I would normally do from my foot. Uh, I can just tell that based on how they're fitting on this sock blocker. Um, they fit me okay though. I mean, I don't know. They're not overly short. But anyway, I used 45, 50 grams. 50 grams? Yes, that's right. 50 grams out of a total of 75 grams of yarn. So that leaves 25 grams, which is technically enough yarn that I could make one more sock. And I might do that just for the mere fact that I could use it in a different way and show another way to use a shorty or a, a mini with a half skein and do something fun. So anyway, that was, that was my other FO. And I knit these in about I think three days technically but like I had them pretty much done in two days and I just had to finish something the third morning so they were a fast knit that's the nice thing about shorty socks they're always fast knit <laughs> alright those are all my FOs so we had my sweater the shorty socks that I just showed you the wrap out of the Bartlett yarns and the Straya hat um, by Andrea Mowry and that is everything that I have finished and I only have one work in progress other than that that I have worked on because honestly I spent a lot of time working on those projects to get them done um, but this is my Your Mermazing sock that um, I'm doing out of my exclusive colorway for the 2022 splash pad party in the Downstore Studio podcast hey if you joined me for my zoom that I did for the kickoff event last Monday. Thank you so much. It was so much fun doing that. But anyway, here is my progress on my first sock. I did have most of the cuff done. I, it was done down to this teal. I did not have the yellow done. Um, if you can hear that, now he's welding. <laughs> that sound. And my neighbor, she is still mowing. I thought it was the husband, but it's not. It's the wife. She's still mowing. Um, anyway, so here I am. I've done this last cuff stripe and then the heel turn or the heel flap heel turn and I did break the yarn to do yarn management to get back in the right color for the foot so I'm probably I'm gonna say probably about an inch and a half from where I'll be starting the toe and then I'll move on to the second sock so yeah um, I can tell you that if you're taking part in the splash pad party, as I am as a participant, not only a sponsor, um, my hat and my weaving were my first two projects that I could turn in for that. So maybe this one will be the third. But anyway, those are my bounce base, my mer uh, your more amazing colorway. It's still available in the shop as a um, dyed order. Excuse me, dyed order, which is shipping out two to three weeks after you order it. Um, I also did a few mini sets of those colors and some fiber on a few different fiber bases um, for the kickoff last week. I wanted to have some, you know, some other new fun things. Um, so if you're interested in either of those, there's some of those left in the shop right now as well. Okay, so again, that was my only whip that's happening. Um, I have myriad socks on the go so you know once I finish with this pair I'll start another pair or I'll pick up another pair although by then maybe I'll have a colorway that I need to do a sample for that's why I end up with so many socks on the go I don't I don't mind that though I like having socks to pick up and do um, so let's talk about upcoming I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now as far as what to work on because I'm getting ready to leave on a trip on Thursday so I don't really want to start anything super big right now um, I don't know I just I don't know um, 
I need to have some vacation knitting and I'm trying to figure out what I want to take for that. I'm going to have plenty of time to knit because, okay, our trip is we're going down to my oldest son's house in North Carolina. His partner, her oldest son is graduating high school, so we're going down for his graduation. So we'll be there for a few days and then I'm, my mom and her hubby will be there too. And so I'm going down with Bill. Um, and then I'm leaving with them and I'm going to Florida with them for a week. Um, Bill cannot take the time off work to go down there, so he'll be coming back home. Uh, but I will be in Florida for a week and when I go to my mom's, especially when I go to my mom's by myself and I don't have Bill with me, <laughs> um, it means I have like almost unlimited knitting time because I can just sit by the pool or I can sit inside or I can sit wherever and I can knit um, and it's very relaxing and play games with my mom <laughs> because we like to play games um, yeah so that's probably gonna be my life for a week and so I definitely need to take knitting projects however the catch to this is that Bill and I are riding down to my son's on a motorcycle course um, and so and I'm not taking my own bike obviously because I won't be able to bring it home um, so I'm riding on the back of his bike which means I'm much more limited in how much stuff I can take since I'm packing a week's worth of clothing along with whatever knitting I take um, I originally had the thought well maybe I'll mail myself some stuff to be at my mom's but then that seems sort of silly although I could probably mail myself some knitting stuff but I'm gonna to try to not have to do that. So anyway, obviously I'm gonna take at least one sock project, actually probably two, just because those will be easy and I can work on them. And, 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 and in addition to having that whole week down there, after on when we leave there, they're actually coming up here and we're driving. So I'm gonna have like, I don't know, how much driving time is that? I forget, like 15 hours? 12 hours, 15, something like that, it's something crazy, in the car to just drive. Like, I'm not driving. I'm going to be a passenger. So, like, I have so much knitting time on this trip. I'm really looking forward to it. So, anyway, I will definitely be taking at least probably two pairs of socks. Um, I think I'm going to take my vamping, that vamping shawl that I started several months ago now um, that I was working on with minis. I think I'm going to take that because that... Even though, I mean, it's easy, but it does have a little bit of patterning to pay attention to. So that would be a nice balance of a project. I would really like to start another sweater or a top or something. Um, I have to think about that, though. The one that's been on my radar lately is Andrea Mowry's um, Winter Beach Cardigan. It's so pretty. Lots of cables and texture. Um, I don't know that I want to take that much yarn with me though. That would probably be something that I would have to mail to myself down there if I wanted to do that. So I may start a fingering weight, so another fingering weight sweater. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Um, I really did enjoy this one. I never thought I would say that about knitting a fingering weight sweater. So those are all thoughts. Um, I could also take my ultra punch stuff and play with that. I could take those button hoops and do the beading down there because that would be small and compact to take with me. I still have my May personal stash yarn challenge yarn that I have not done anything with. So I might take that skein with me. That would probably be a good project. Um, that was that purpley kind of marled hand spun. Oh my gosh, this fly, he's got my name. He's just like, they're your mind to bug today. Um, and I have not opened my June bag yet. I think I feel like because I didn't do May, I didn't want to open June yet. But if it's something maybe I could use with May or something else that might make a good project for the trip, maybe I'll do that. If I do that, I will insert a picture of it right here and show you what it was. Um, and then the other project that's on my radar to definitely start is a summer top. Um, for Emma that I bought the yarn for last year. In fact, I bought two different yarns <laughs> for it um, because I bought one that was like a linen and I decided I didn't want to make it out of linen. So then I bought another yarn that I found while we were on our motorcycle trip up in Maine last year. And so I have the yarn for it. Um, it's the, I think it's Lydia 2.0 is the name of the top. If I can 
I'll, I'll put a picture of that in here too. It it's a small top. There is like lace work on it, but I looked at the pattern the other day. It's over 30 pages long. <laughs> I'm not taking that on vacation with me. Besides, if I'm knitting it for Emma, I would like her to be around. So like if I can try it on her or whatever. But I was like, what on earth needs 30 pages for this pattern? I don't know. So, but I will work on that this summer. Because I would like to get that done for her. I have a bunch of other yarn that I bought for tops for her that she wants. The crochet tops though. And I don't know that I'll take those either. I don't know. I need to find projects to take with me. I'm just sort of in a place where I'm like, I don't know what I want to work on. Like, I know I want to work on a bunch of different things, but none of them are things that I really want to work on right this second. That's why, like, I have one sock that I'm working on right now, and that's it. It's such a weird thing. Like, do you ever get like that? Or you're just like, it's not like your mojo's gone. It's just like, you're like, you don't know. It's decision paralysis or something. Anyway, all right. Let's move on. Um, the Mio Mao, we are in the second month of the second quarter now for the Mio Mao. And that is the make it your own Mal make along if you're new um, you can find all that information about the make along both in the fiber nymph dye works Ravelry group and in a post that is pinned to the top of the fiber nymph dye works blog <gasps> I think the lawnmower stopped oh, it's amazing um, so you can find all of that it's never too late to join in if you would like to join us for that um, there's a very active chatter group in the Ravelry group. I am finally caught up on all the posts. Oh my gosh. Mark this date on the calendar because I'm usually pretty far behind. But I am caught up right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is the Mio Mal and new things. I have one new thing to show you that's knitting related. And it's yarn that I kind of bought on a whim. I bought it earlier this week, actually, and it got here really, really quickly. Um, it is from Bandit Fiber Co. And these are the colors. Oh my gosh, aren't they amazing? The colorway is called Hooker Boots. <laughs> but it's just phenomenal. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this yarn. Um, the owner of Bandit Fiber Co. had posted on Instagram that she, she hasn't been dying a lot, I don't think, in the last year or so. I think she's had some health issues that she's been dealing with. Um, but she did post recently about some new colorways that she put in the shop, or new skeins. I don't know if they're new colorways, per se. Um, but she put them up, and she was trying to um, raise some money, because I guess her dog also has some health issues and needs some vet care. So um, she was putting the money from those skeins into her vet fund so I bought some to help support her and her pup so again it's called hooker butts this is boots it's a fingering weight yarn a 7525 superwash merino nylon um, 462 yards so my actually my first thought whenever I saw it I was like ooh, I could weave something really cool with this so I don't know it may end up turning into a weaving project or I could just knit something really bright and fun it's not enough yardage for me to make a garment for myself. I mean, maybe a summer top, but it's also wool, so I don't... Well, here I am. I'm, it's 73 degrees today. I'm sitting here in a wool sweater. I'm saying, I don't know that I want a wool summer top. I don't know. Right now, I'm just enjoying it because it's super pretty. So, anyway. So, that's a new thing. My water bottle's a new thing. I told you about my water bottle, I think, already. I can't remember because, like I told you, I started this podcast. I don't know how many times. Anyway, but my one other new thing that I got this week that is not at all knitting related or fiber related, and um, but it's awesome and cool, um, I got a new oracle deck. Um, so those of you who are into like tarot decks and oracle decks, you might be interested in this. Um, I love all of those. Um, I, I use them. They're kind of like an inspiration kind of thing for me. Um, and also just like when I'm like looking for insights and thoughts, you know, new perspectives, I guess that's mainly what I use them for. But anyway, this one has been on my list that I've wanted to get for a while and it's called Woodland Wardens by Jessica Rue. It is beautiful. This deck is just lovely and I love um, nature oriented decks. 
I know that'll come as a huge shock to you guys who know <laughs> who know me. Um, and I'm just I'm so inspired by nature in general. But this deck was beautiful, and I'm not gonna like flip through all these decks. But I just wanted to show you. Look at the back of these cards. Aren't they beautiful? And what I realized this morning is the backs are not all the same color of green. There's different shades of green in here. Like I don't know how well that's. Yeah, you can kind of see that. It's so cool. But the artwork on them is just lovely and all of them have a woodland creature plus a plant so this one's um, the raccoon and sycamore and the keyword there is curiosity for that one um, some of them are just oh well they're all beautiful i love her artwork let me see if i can find a couple more of my faves um eh, i don't want to drop them Oh, this one's so pretty. This rooster and sunflowers. The communication. Isn't that pretty? The colors and her, her drawing style. The dragonfly and pansy for balance. Those blues are just killing me. Um, the very first one, here it is. The first one in the deck is this little field mouse and the buttercup. Isn't that beautiful? I just love that mouse and you know like at our house we get mice in the house all the time and it's like I can just see the attitude of that mouse the keyword is innocence on that one so anyway you know if you're into this kind of stuff you might want to check this deck out if it's something that you like nature and critters and plants and it does come with like a little guidebook which is a nice one it's um it's nice. It has like a two page layout for each card that shows the card and then like a little explanation of the card and the meaning that the author has assigned to it. Um, when I use oracles and, and tarot decks, I tend to do them more intuitively than following the guidebooks per se. Um, that's just me though. Um, but I do like to read through them too, just to you know, kind of get an idea if there's some sort of thought that maybe I missed or an additional kind of insight or what have you. So anyway, I just thought I would share that with you mainly because it's beautiful and it's bringing me joy. Um, okay, I think that's everything for 90%. Um, we're going to talk about shop news real quick here. Um, the state of the studio. Things are really just pretty quiet in the studio right now because I am getting ready to go away for 10 days. <sighs> These bugs are going to make me crazy. I'm sorry. This is distracting to you. <laughs> um, I told you already about the semi-solids event that's taking place. Again, that coupon code is SSE15 um, for 15% off any of the items um, if you purchase four or more of them from the semi-solids event. They're only good on that, the semi-solids from that event. Um, but that is good through Tuesday and again because of my vacation coming up any orders that I get by noon Eastern on Wednesday will ship out before I leave anything that comes in afternoon on Wednesday after 12 o'clock noon on Wednesday I can't guarantee will ship out before I leave and obviously once I'm gone if anything comes in that won't ship until after I return um, that will also possibly affect how quickly I turn around die to order items like the your mermazing colorway if you order it earlier on in my vacation it might take a little longer um, but it'll still get to you within that two to three week turnaround period but just just know that you know I am gonna be away so that'll affect things the shop will remain open while I'm away though um, so again I will have notices up and people you know you know you'll be reminded that like shipping will be you know delayed because of my trip um, let's see oh the other thing I want to let you know is I have a new yarn and fiber club that's going to be starting up soon. It is called the Backyard Bird Watchers Yarn and Fiber Club Second Edition because I did a Backyard Bird Watchers Club last year and I loved it. 
and I that was I put those three colorways um, in the shop for the last update um, chickadee blue jay and purple finch those were all from that club last year but there are so many more birds so many more birds <laughs> that I want to do so I'm doing a second round of that club um, and here's the little notice that I have for it um, the signups for that are going to go up while I'm away actually um, memberships will go up for pre-order on Monday the 13th Monday June 13th at starting at 9 a.m. Eastern and then they'll be open all through the rest of the month of June there will be yarn options there will be fiber options and for the first time included in the yarn options I'm gonna do shorty sock sets as a club option I've never done that before but I think that'll be a nice way um, to offer another option because it'll be a little bit less expensive than the other option so if you want to have the fun of the club but don't want to have quite the same expense as the full skeins of yarn and everything that might be a good option for you um, I do not have that listing up in the shop quite yet but it will be up um, before I leave on my trip and I will be sending a newsletter out also before I go um, with all of the information about the club as well so you can be checking that out the club shipments there will be three club shipments as always and those will ship out in July September and November so I hope um, that is exciting for some of you because I'm really looking forward to doing another round of that club um, and that is everything for shop news and that just brings me to what is bringing me joy this week and I have to say the thing that is bringing me the most joy this past week has been moments of quiet <laughs> um, it's actually a little quiet right now which is nice after all of that noise but oh, I don't know what's going on now I said that and now there's noise up there but anyway no just in my everyday kind of life um, it's you know my daughter lives here she works most days though so she's not home and she's not noisy but it's just having a lot of other people around um, and you know Bill's been working at home for over two years now and so I don't have a lot of times when it's just me home by myself and even if they're home and they're not making a lot of noise it's just different oh, gosh. the energy in the house is just different when there's a lot of other people around right not the two is a lot of other people but anyway my point is this past week um, there was a couple of days I'm sorry these bugs are absolutely making me crazy I cannot stand it when flies or whatever are near my head that noise just like it does something to me anyway there was a couple of days this past week um, where they were both at work out of the house um, and it was just it was just nice you know it was just <sighs> calm like it I was calmer inside just because I had that external quiet I hope that makes sense I'm sure it does to some of you um, so anyway that has been bringing me joy um, on the flip side I'm very much looking forward to spending time with family next weekend at my son's house and then spending time with my mom and her husband down at their house and then as I said they're driving me back up here because my mom's gonna stay here for a week well he well he'll be here for a little bit too um, but then he's gonna visit his brothers who live in West Virginia so and then he'll be back up here but so we're basically I'm gonna be with my mom for like two whole weeks which that hasn't happened in a really long time so I'm looking forward to that um, yeah and it's just it's a beautiful point in the summer um, it's been getting warm the garden is really starting to grow and um, the birds have been at the feeders it's been so much fun we had some deer in the yard um, who haven't bothered the garden yet thankfully um, yeah it's just been it's been really nice so I'm very much enjoying the quiet and I'm jo enjoying um, just beautiful things like small beautiful things like you know like a new oracle deck that has beautiful art on it or um, you know it really is sometimes just about the small things like not the big exciting things but just small things that go on that are happy you know 
especially whenever everything else around you feels like there's so much chaos happening and there's nothing that we can do about that chaos um, it's good to just remember to grab onto those small restful things when you can and appreciate them for what they are while you have them so anyway that's my words of wisdom for the moment <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm probably not gonna be able to get this video up until tomorrow, but I want to start editing it anyway and get working towards that. So I hope you all are well. I hope you've had a good weekend and have a lovely coming week. And I will try to stay in touch while I'm away. Like I said, I'll try to maybe do a special episode while I'm down in Florida at my mom's. That would be fun. So stay tuned for that. Um, but until I talk to you next time, take care. Love you guys. Bye.